Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Go check out my website at skyazrael.com. It's bright and early. Daily discipline. Mind, body, and soul. This is how we get through. It's Sunday. I don't know if I have any new subscribers this week. Most of you know how this works. I go through my notes. I study like crazy every single day. This has been a productive week. I have a lot to talk about. There's a lot in my notepad this, this week. I got four pages full of stuff I'd like to share with you. Hopefully we get through a couple. We'll just see how it goes. Maybe I'll do another study group for Warriors video if I have time, either later today or we'll do it on Wednesday. The last Wednesday group uh, seemed like it got some attention. So as long as you guys want this stuff, I'll keep feeding it. Let's just get into it. Let's talk about racism. You guys already know how the culture war works. You know that if you deny someone's identity, that that's supposed to be a form of bigotry, right? And that's so ridiculous. If somebody chooses to be a cat, I, I'm a cat today, meow, meow, meow. You know, and if you don't believe it, then you're a racist. <laughs> that's how it works. Like these guys playing uh, dress up in their sister's closet. And if you deny that they're now their sister, they're going to get mad, go hold their breath, scream victimhood, scream racism. You're a bigot. You know, I didn't know trannies were a race. I didn't know gays were a race. You can be racist, be a bigot. God forbid if you say, I don't approve, I don't like it. I don't want to be around you. I don't want my kids around you. Oh, it makes you a racist. But that's, I'm not going to tell you the obvious. I don't make this video to try to tell you stuff you already know. Did you know that the new form of racism is around your very worldview itself? So, for example, if you are an objective person, you believe in objective truth, that there is such a thing as truth, that there is such a thing as right and wrong, that there is an up and a down. There's a black and a white. There's a night and a day. It doesn't all have to be that way. There, there are shades of gray in this world, but there is absolute truth. Truth exists. That's objectivity. Well, that's racist. <laughs> Subjectivity is what liberals are all about. It's all subjective. Ah, that's your truth. I have my personal truth. You have your personal truth. If you settle on a truth, oh, you're such a racist. Objectivity is now racist. So, everybody's an extremist, apparently. And all I can say on this is I'm done with it. If you think I'm a bigot, then I'll be a bigot. That doesn't mean that I'm going to turn into what you want me to be. That doesn't mean that I give up who I am. That means I'm not fighting you on what you think I am. I don't care what you think I am. If you want to go around and think that I'm a certain way, I don't care. I've had lots of people think that I was a neo-Nazi skinhead. I don't care what you think of me. I'm not here to change your mind on anything. If that's what you want to think, think it. I could care less what you think. And I'm, I'm, that's where I'm at with this. I don't care what a bunch of little sissies say about me. They, they think I'm a racist because I work out. They think I'm a racist because I wear a watch and I show up on time. They think I'm a racist because I drive a new car. They think I'm a racist because I got a house in a nice neighborhood. They think I'm a racist because, uh, I mean, you just go on and on because I, I think there is such thing as objective truth. So fine. So be it then. <laughs> you want me to be a racist? Then that's what, I'm, that's what I am. You know, I, I don't know what else to say. You can't argue with people like this. There's nothing you can say to argue with them. You, you can't debate them. You can't convince them. They have settled on a conclusion, and they're locked into it. And that's the definition of cult membership. You're, you're talking to a cult member. How are you going to argue some cult member out of believing what they believe? You can't. Move on to the next one. Feed what's feeding you. I kind of have this idea that I was born of the forest. Not literally. I was born in a house in Seattle, Washington. You guys were born in a hospital, not me. <laughs> we're born in the house. My, my mom was in the uh, ambulance. And I don't know the exact story. There was some sort of problem with the fucking ambulance. Like, not 
with the car, but they didn't go to the hospital we wanted to go to. It was like a jurisdictional thing. So long story short, they literally pulled over on the side of the road, <laughs> let my mom, pregnant mom, in labor, let her out of the back of the ambulance, and drove off. And she got into the car that was following, that, which was a bunch of her friends, and we drove to a nearby house, just somebody's house. Hey, what's up? Mind if we come in and have a baby all over you for? And that's where I was born. But I like to think about this idea of a tree. And feed what's feeding you. So, see, for example, a tree falls down in the forest after it's dead, and its bark its very body, everything about the tree, the leaves, the limbs, everything on it rots and goes back into the soil and enriches the soil. It feeds the soil. The soil in the forest is made up of dead trees. It's the dead. Life springs out of that death. So you can think about what is it that feeds you? The soil feeds the tree, and then it goes back to the tree. What feeds me, say for example, is positivity. Positivity, if you keep peeling back the layers of that onion. Positivity is another way of saying love. I've talked about this before, there's only love and fear. That's all that exists. So when we talk about positivity, you're talking about love. If you're talking about negativity of any kind, even anger, negativity of any kind, is always fear at its root. So we talk about reciprocity and feeding what's feeding us, giving back. I try to live a lifestyle that produces positivity within me. And that positivity that I get, it's not just focused inward. I'm not just sitting in the mirror going, me, me, or jacking off to my videos. I try to spread that to other people. It's one of the reasons why I started life coaching. Because I realized that I have a certain power that I can pass on. Let's move to the next one. Try to be a man of value, a man of character. When you're a man of value and a man of character, when you die, your community will miss you. One of the things that I have as a goal is to have somebody show up at my funeral. If I could get a couple people to show up at my funeral, that's a win. This life is successful. You know, I stopped sitting around and started spending my life preparing. So many people are waiting. I spent so much of my life waiting. Waiting for love, waiting for an opportunity, waiting for goals to happen, just waiting. Waiting for the bus, waiting for friends, waiting for a date, waiting for a job interview. I feel like that I spent every day, my entire life waiting. When you really start to look at it and you realize, wow, I, how much time do I actually spend, spend waiting? I read a statistic one time that people spend four years of their life waiting in line. If you count up all the time that you've waited in line at Starbucks or at the grocery store or wherever you wait in line at the bank, that's four years of your life, just solid. <laughs> Imagine all the other times we wait. Well, that's one way of going through life is to wait. That's your choice. You could do that. Or you could prepare. You could sit around and wait and stare at the door. Go stare at the road. I used to do that when I, my mom was going to pick me up from somewhere, from the mall or wherever I was. I would stare as far down the road as I could to see if I could see her car coming. But I, I start preparing. My entire life is about training. I train every single day, relentlessly and monotonously. And I'm in this 
place of readiness, like a warrior. I'm ready. I'm ready to grab my weapon at any time. Whether it's revolution or my dream girl, I'm ready for anything. Let's go to the next one. You know, you've heard this before. Pain is, pain is the preparation. Your pain is your preparation. Maybe crying about a lifetime of trauma, all the shit you've gone through, all the pain that you've had. Oh, it's been so bad. It's been so much worse than everybody else. Why me, Lord? Why me? God needed a strong warrior. That's why. If you can't criticize your own side's narrative, you're a brainwashed sheep living in a bubble. And you're no different than the enemy. Let that sink in. Let's go to the next one. I was thinking about this earlier in the week. Their tricks have failed. I'm not afraid. Their tricks have failed. And I'm not afraid. Fear is a good motivator. Fear motivates you to vote. Fear motivates you to purchase things. Fear motivates you to believe certain things. Fear is a really good motivator. Fear is a tactic used by the devil. <laughs> For me, you can decide where you are in this game. For me, my armor's too thick. The tricks failed. All those little arrows you shoot at me, they just bounce off. I'm one of the few people that you know that can honestly say that I'm not afraid of anything. I could die right here before my next sentence. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of success. I'm not afraid of greatness. I'm not afraid of the responsibility. I'm not afraid of being right to the point of being overwhelmed by things to do and by life itself. I'm not afraid of anything. You motherfuckers can keep trying to shoot those arrows, but it's not going to do shit to a guy like me. Let's go to the next one. This is going to sting some of you. Some of you aren't going to understand it. But the state is a false idol. There's only one God. You only worship one ruler, and that's God. If you don't understand that, you don't understand the hierarchy of man goes God, man, woman, child. That's what's going on here on planet Earth. The state, your president, is just another man. I don't care if it's Trump, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, I don't care who it is. I don't worship any other fucking man. They are not my savior. Let's go to the next one. Learn to see far. Have good distance. I had to learn to see really far when I was on safari in Africa. I spent six weeks on safari in Africa in Kenya and Tanzania. Tanzania is better than Kenya, but whatever. That's just a travel video. <laughs> when I was out there in the bush, we really wanted to see lions. Many times in the yellow grass, all you can see is the back of the lion's ear. They'll have a little bit of black coloring right on the back of their ear. If you really get good at it, you can see far away. And that's what you're looking for is those two little black dots. That's the backs of their ears. Their head might just be poking up in the grass. You have to learn to see really far. When you're thinking about your goals, you have to see far. Learn to see far ahead of you. But you have to realize you'll never get there. You, 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 you may never get there. And when you do, each goal turns into a plateau. It's not the destination. You realize, wow, well, this is great. This is what I've been working for my whole life. But what about that up there? And that's not greed. That's called aspiration. If you can't see the goal, if you can't see the destination, even if it's just a picture in your head, if you can't see it, you can't have it. 
have an attitude of gratitude. Don't be an angry beggar. How many of you out there are angry beggars? Be thankful in every moment in every situation. I actually do this. I give thanks in my head. I'm thinking about it all the time. Thank you, Lord. I burned my dinner the other night. Fucking empty fridge. For, no, no food in the fridge. I hadn't gone grocery shopping. The only thing I had, I was looking forward to making it up, and I fucking burnt the shit. Ah, ruined it. And now late at night, I got to figure out what's open, and can I go out and get dinner? And I was so frustrated. I was contemplating not even having dinner. I was just, uh oh. <laughs> Really, really, really a bitchy mood. And I remembered, this is all just part of the journey, man. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the burnt dinner. Thank you for the ruined dinner. Thank you for this pain in the ass. Now I have to get dressed and go out into the world, and you know, I might even have to go to the bank machine to get some cash. And, ah, this whole thing's going to suck. Thank you, Lord. And you never know what your journey is really going to be about. You never know where your adventure lies or where your destiny lies. It's all food for thought. I got two and a half more pages. I didn't even get to the good stuff yet. Have a good day.